Welcome to our second weekend of uh, PXR 2020. Uh, PXR is brought to you by uh, Single Thread and Electric Company Theater. And uh, we are also uh, grateful to our community partners, Toaster Lab, Langara Center for Entertainment Arts, and especially the Canada Council for the Arts Digital Strategy Fund. Uh, we'd like to acknowledge that we have organized this event primarily on the traditional ancestral an unceded territory of the Coast Salish peoples, uh, the Squamish, the Salitude, and the Musqueam nations. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce you to uh, Catherine Bourgeois. Uh, she's actually waiting for us in the, uh, the world beyond this one. Uh, and uh, Catherine is one of the first people who um, agreed to, to present at uh, PXR. And I, I really am excited about the work that she's doing. Uh, so this presentation is going to be exploring the parallels between the genre of theater and virtual reality and the dramaturgical journey between them. Uh, Catherine is going to speak to the goals, objectives, and experience of creating her mixed reality piece, Violette, uh, as well as the urgent need for uh, and need of diverse groups of creators working in VR and forging paths to develop wider audiences. So. Um, I'm going to give you a choice. I'm going to do a belly portal. I don't know if you've, any of you have taken part in a belly portal, or you can go through this teleporter if it does not work for you. So I'm going to, uh, let's see here. Give me one second. Bear with me. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is exciting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's see here. Give me one second. You'll know that you've done it successfully because there'll be a line extending. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? And if this doesn't work and you're left behind, <laughs> you can go through the teleporter just to my, uh, my left. You're right. Okay. Here we go. Over here, right this way. I'd like to reintroduce and maybe let's get a round of applause for uh, Catherine Bourgeois speaking to us about her production, uh, Violette. Merci, Catherine, and uh, take it away. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. Um, can you hear me all right? Mm. Yeah. Yep, okay. Um, so thank you, Alex, and um, thank you for being here. Um, it's um, my first time uh, giving a talk in virtual reality and while sitting in the comfort of my home in Tochage, Montreal. Um, so I'm here as the artistic director of the company uh, called Joe, Jack and John. And um, we are like 17 years old, a theater company based in Montreal. And uh, our mandate focused on around collaboration and um, as well, like uh, with a special, um, with a particular focus on collaborating with artists uh, living with disabilities. So we are like an inter interdependent um, company that uh, uh, love to create new shows and like uh, devise collectively uh, um, together. Um, today I'm here to talk about Violet, which is our project that involves mixed reality which is like live theater and uh, VR like a VR film um, so this project started about like four years ago uh, the kind of like the like creation inception process started like four years ago and initially I had in mind a site specific piece uh, that would then like get like an audience member to knock on a door and come in an apartment and meet one person. So that would have been like a one person at a time play. Um, and where like an, an actress uh, with a disability would open the door, welcome the spectator and make a cup of tea and share our story. And then I traveled to Europe and I, um, I was in a conference about like live arts and there was this uh, conference more about like mixed reality um and augmented reality and virtual reality and 
And my only experience in that was that as a user, um, so I had very little to, um, I, I knew very little about it, but the the conference person was like actually convinced that theater people uh, were actually good um, artists to help develop the lit literacy and the medium of uh, VR because we are used to kind of like uh, compose and write compelling story, engaging story, complex storytellings um, in actually immersive environment um, because like the theater experience being like a kind of like 360 immersive moment when you go to the theater. Um, so I came back to Montreal and I read more about the VR and I reflected and I felt really attracted to this new medium um, because I felt that it kind of like created a sense of connection that maybe photo, mm -hmm. TV and film could create way back when it came out because there was this proximity and the novelty of the medium. But now like this new medium that could create such a sensation was actually uh, VR. Um, at the same time, I was a bit like repulsed by the medium because um, <laughs> not because of the empathy feeling that it creates, but I just wonder if we needed uh, in our society like more um, more privileged people with high tech, expensive gears, um, developing a sense of entitlement around in the world of this uh, kind of like oh yes I know what is a refugee camp I was there I walked in the shoes of a refugee or I know what is Ebola crisis in Africa because I was there I walked in those shoes um, so I guess that like convinced of the uh, attracted by the museum and as well convinced of the importance of having more diverse voices voices emerging um, I kind of like jumped in and decided to uh, transform my site specific theater project into like a mixed reality of like theater and VR. Um, so we started to work on a story that was anchored in a reality that we don't talk often or that we don't hear often about, which is the fact that 70 to 90% of women living with an intellectual disability will experience sexual abuse in the course of their lives. And um, um, so this is a, a difficult reality that like collaborating with artists with disability over the last 17 years, the company has been very kind of like, uh, it's a reality that we, we encountered in our lives. And so we gathered like a team of uh, differently abled artists and we started to devise on this subject. So Violet is actually like a story about intimacy, about consent and about abuse, abuse made by a family friend. Um, soon in the process of development of the script and all that, it became clear that we needed to do a beta version of it because actually like most of us being like theater maker, we had no clue what we were talking about. And it was very difficult to have meeting and to actually like see how it was it would be unfolding so um we did like a beta version at very low cost it was shot in my own apartment in my bedroom and uh, it was as well like presented the theater uh, piece or the performance itself was as well presented in uh, my apartment in the spring of 2018 here in montreal so i'm just gonna present you like a short clip of uh, this kind of like first uh, beta version installment um, and it's like this version is in French and the sound is not that great but it's basically the welcoming of a participant that arrives so the live part of it the more like theater part of it and going to like a quick excerpt of the 360 movie that we produced here we go participant that arrives so the live part of it the more hi everybody um so sorry for the technical difficulty. Um, my name is Yumi. I'm a colleague of Catherine. I also work for uh, Joe, Jack, and John. Um, I guess that Catherine had a small connection issue, so she has just disappeared, but she should be back in a few seconds. Um, were you guys able to see the video, or was it not showing for you? Not really? Yeah, no, I can see it. I can see it. I couldn't okay. see anything. I could see it. 
I can't see anything. It's just repeating. I it's see also two still playing too. me. Yeah, there's two screens and the audio was really echoey and hard to make out. Oh, okay. Well, I'm really sorry about that. For those of you who could not see the screen, um, the video showed um, the actress Violet, um, Violet um, welcoming the spectator into an apartment and leaning him to the bedroom where the interactive experience used to take place in the original beta version of the of the play. Um, so it was really a site-specific experience, and that created a whole set of issues because we wanted to bring this work to uh, more people, you know, out in the world and have it tour and be able to reach as many people as we could with, with the story of, of Violet. Um, so from the very first uh, version that, uh, that, that was shown in the... Um, in the video, we worked towards um, a second version um, that was not site specific anymore, even though it was shot in the same set. But um, the video itself shows a bedroom and the, the experience takes place in a very similar setting. However, the interactive experience uh, takes place in a custom built cabin that is um, half the size of the real VR space, so that when the spectator arrives to take part into the experience, it finds himself in this like tiny cabin that is that gives this kind of feeling of um, intrusion, and a, it's a little bit claustrophobic, and you feel really uncomfortable because you're really entering a personal and private space of Violet, and you're about to hear her very personal and private story. Um, so it was really important for us to find a way to keep um, a connection between the real physical space and the virtual world space. So the what we let's say that we use a couple of tricks to uh, to try to ensure continuity in the space perception. So one is that the um, the accessories and the furniture that are in the cabin are exactly the same ones that you see in the virtual world. Uh, it's just the dimensions are a little bit different. Um, and another one is that we used uh, a blanket that is given to the audience member when it arrives on the set um, that he puts or she puts on herself. And then in the virtual world, you you enter the experience sitting on a bed with the same blanket on you that you can see. So it gives you the impression that that is still you yourself, your f physical self in the virtual world with the same accessories around you. And How you I mean? think I saw Catherine, uh, yeah, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to let her continue. So I guess you were covering more the anchoring the participant in the, in the reality. Um, mm -hmm. Um, some of the challenge, um, I'm sorry, I disappeared. I was exposed from the space, but <laughs> I'm back. Um, so some of the challenge that um, uh, I faced and I discovered through that first incarnation was actually the, the fact of directing actors when there's a 360 camera in a space where like I can't be in the space and I still have to direct and get the kind of like get this to see what the look what it looks like so that was one of the challenges that we faced and as well i think that one of the um finding that we had was that like the importance of like other characters because if it's only one character talking there's a very like there's a very minimal use of the actual like 360 environment well if there's like interaction with different character in the space there's a possibility for like using more like the 360 element of it. And in the kind of like golden version that we produced after that, we even like pushed it further in the sense that we we in put more emphasis on the creating like an interaction with the audience member and getting the audience member to become more like a participating kind of role in it, like as a witness, but as well as a friend, as a con fighting friend so um i think that that's about like that what we learned from that and i would like to just like if for you it was possible to follow me on the second platform over there i'd like to show you like an excerpt of like the golden version the golden version that like we produced uh, last year 
So teleportation. Um, so Alex is going to rebuild the projection screen, um, but I just going to keep uh, chatting away. <laughs> um, I guess like because of the subject matter being such a difficult um, one, uh, we chose to actually like uh, not develop like a graphic express, I mean a graphic work, but more like a magic realistic, magic realism way of doing the story, of unfolding the story. So, and in the golden version, we also decided to push further the confinement in the room um, and not using like footage like of external elements. Have you seen downstairs with the beta version where we kind of like put like the impression of like a layer of forest, of actual forest in the room, but we just developed more like the magical aspect in a more like imaginative way. And um, and the screen's still not there. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, um, I guess that like uh, the production, I could tell you that the production was meant to open in Montreal last May, but uh, obviously because of COVID, it was postponed and we uh, thought that we would be able to open it this October, this late October. But um, um, as you might know, um, the COVID crisis in Montreal is like we are about like 1100 new cases a day. Uh, so mm -hmm. we don't think that we're going to be able to present the production uh, this fall. Um, so we just like keeping a uh, finger crossed that one day we'll be able to actually present the full experience um, with the live interaction and the VR element to it. Um, we were in touch with the Phi Center in Montreal and they advised us to buy a clean box. So I don't know if any of you had to deal with like COVID issue, COVID related issue, but we um, bought like a clean box uh, from the States and it's basically like a UV, UV uh, rays that kind of kill everything. So between each participant, we'll, we'll have to put the, um, the headset in the clean box. Um, oh, ready. Blue roses are actually white roses. You cut them and put them in blue coloring. In a few hours, they turn blue. Stay here. I've never liked it here. It's really depressing. You think so? You should come with me to the forest. You can breathe there. Be free. No. Not now, okay? You must feel so alone when I'm not there. I'm not alone. Look, someone's here. It's cramped. Stuffy. You'd be better off with me in the forest. There are people who come and see me. People like who? Look, I have company. People like him, Violet. Him who? People like Joe. Joe will always be grateful to us. Joe fills our house with flowers of all colors, balloons, teddy bears, and thank you cards that play music. Joe sends me a blue rose every 4th of March 
to thank me for saving his life. Joe speaks French. He dresses well, and he's a really good guy. Joe buys me a slinky red dress for my 16th birthday. Joe comes to see me one evening when my parents are at the movies. Joe shows me a movie that I don't know how I feel. Joe invites me for a picnic. Joe puts his hand somewhere that I'm not too sure. For my 18th birthday, Joe tells me about an even more special flower. Joe says that at 18, we can. At 18, we can. Joe is a magician. His best trick, disappearing from my life. So, yeah, that was the <laughs> um, excerpt. So opening it won't be October 28th, but um, soon, soon it will happen. Um, so as I said, like in the little notes uh, through the videos, I guess that like what I wanted to stretch by um, that is that like as theater makers, uh, we have some tools or skills that we develop, uh, which uh, is, I guess, the power of words um, acting, the transitioning as well. And so um, instead of like just relying on more like pricey and special effects and things that maybe were a bit outside of our um, um, reach, we actually like use the, the things that we were good at. And, um, and one thing that we rely all the way in theater is the suspension of disbelief because nobody like like you go to the theater and nobody believes that there's this is real stuff happening there's wings there's other people around there's like uh, all kind of element that tells you that this is not real life well sometimes in movie we do get this impression of real life happening uh, so like we kind of like if we point out and say this is a forest and although it's like a shadow theater forest like we rely on the fact that people will believe it is a forest. So um, we use that a lot because basically uh, we really stayed way more in the room in that version than in the f previous version. And we try to kind of like push the imagi imaginative uh, aspect of it. Um, I'm just going to move to the slide section, which I can is move to, uh, Catherine, I can move it to you. Oh, OK. Um, I would also say we're we are a bit short on time, and it's, yeah. it's entirely my fault. Do you do you want to maybe take questions from the audience, like to give them a chance to to ask you? But the person, um, do you want to go to the slides? 
Oh, I just like just I would like to finish just like as in terms of like um um if you could put up the slides I, I will just we'll use do. one slide or two um just quickly to finish I guess that like the first version was shot in my bedroom and as you can imagine I didn't want to go with a full production shot in um oops here we are uh, shot in um my bedroom with the hundreds of audience member going through my apartment. So we did build a set. Um, we paired up with a very fine company here in Montreal, it's named Unlimited. And um, this is the company. Uh, and quickly, we as well shot the thing with three different actresses. So we could actually present it three different times. So this Anne Steffi that you've seen in the English excerpt, and there's as well Stephanie that's doing another French version, and Tamara who's the bilingual and plays both uh, both version. Um, this is us cutting wood in the forest, and this is actually the set we built. So it's a box set that was meant to be like a, a closed room. So this bridge between the Oh no, it looks like we lost Catherine again. So sorry about that. So um, what you're seeing right now um, in the town left is the actual set where the cabin, where the experience takes place. Um, and as you can see, the, the bed and the chair are the exactly same and the, the pictures on the wall are the exact same elements that are in the VR video when you're in the experiencing the VR parts of the story. So uh, just to conclude, I'm back. we... Uh, okay. I'm, I'm yeah, back, sorry, thank you, Yumi. So, <laughs> so that was our way of making a terrible set that would like bridge between the reality and the fiction and bridge the two worlds together. And um, maybe we have time for a few questions, but as well, I just wanted to let you know that if any of you would be interested to see the full version, we now have it on YouTube VR and you can contact, or you can talk to me or I about it, and we could send you the link. And uh, Alex, if there's time for one question or two, like I'll let you decide. <laughs> of course, yeah. Uh, anyone have a question and want to raise their hand? Uh, we can. <laughs> We're good. Uh, all right. Thanks so much oh, for yes. creating that, Catherine. I think that was beautiful, yeah. by the way. Amy, Amy uh, one, one question over here, Amy Bouchard. Yeah. Hi, Catherine. Um, Hi. Yeah, I'm just curious about um, the audience coming in to experience the show. Um, I'm not sure if you can hear me. Do you yeah. find that you have um, audiences who are also coming in on the spectrum or neurodiverse who are taking part in the work as well? This is like the the, um, the question of accessibility is very close to our art, obviously, like the accessibility as an audience member as well. So uh, we are developing um, kind of like groups of people, of women most, uh, mostly living with a disability and uh, doing a workshop, a prepping workshop and like just some special um, um, session for them to actually come in. So this is something that we are working on in terms of like making sure that this work reach an audience that's actually concerned about it. Um, so I would say yes, this is like actually like a quite accessible work. It's not like uh, art to access. The story unfolds very kind of like smoothly and accessibly, I would say. Thanks for Wonderful. your question. Thanks. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Um, I, we are unfortunately at time. If you have other questions for, for uh, Catherine, uh, please uh, maybe go find her and, and, uh, and, and ask her one on one. And Catherine, I just want to thank you. That was, I, I, I mean, that's the equivalent of, you know, the theater while we're doing the show, the, you know, faucets explode and the place floods, but we just keep going. We keep doing it. And you were brilliant. You were absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for, and sorry about all that. Thank you. No, it's, no, you, you were amazing. Thank you so much.
Chez moi, nous parlons chez Crash. Je te faire venir qui monte le chou dans ma chambre. Pour le moment, je suis contente que tu sois là. Est-ce que tu vas la couverture? On va mettre le cache. OK. As-tu besoin de l'ajuster? C'est bon. C'est bon. Euh, si au cours de l'expérience, tu te sens mal, enlève le cache. OK. Je vais mettre mes écouteurs. Vois-tu la rose bleue? Oui, je vais te raconter mon histoire. Euh, non, non, c'est terminé, je t'aiderai plus. T'es nul ton histoire. C'est une belle histoire d'amour qui va voir. C'est comme dans les boîtes de céréales. Il y a une surprise au fond. Ah, oh, puis tu me fais chier, fais dans ce que tu veux. C'est le moment. Compte jusqu'à trois. Un, deux, trois. Entends-tu la forêt respirer? Je ne sais pas pourquoi je commence toujours mon histoire ici. Peut-être juste parce que ça énerve Lucie ou parce qu'il y a tellement de contes qui commencent dans les bois. Ah, ah, ah.